morning. Welcome to Mitchell Consulting's series on tips and tricks for SAP Business One. Today we're going to talk about defining posting periods in SAP. So here we're going to go in, we're going to go to our modules, we're going to go to administration, posting periods. This will allow us to define posting periods for the next year. A little bit about the posting period before I get into it. I want to show you the actual setup of a posting period. So let's go down here to the last one. Let's look at a posting period. Okay, and you can see here the posting periods cons consist of a period code, a period name, a set of subperiods. These subperiods could be months, quarters, or an individual year. A period indicator. A category, which is the actual period code, in this case 2013, and a period status. There are four period statuses. Unlocked means that the period is unlocked and you can post, anybody with any authorizations can post directly into the period. You can set a period to be unlocked except sales. This is used for the first couple days in the beginning of a month when you do not want any sales documents, invoices to post. However, you still want to keep the period open due to accounts payables and other documents coming in at a prior a period. The other one's a closing period. Now by default you can see down here is that you can set the system that it will actually change the status from unlocked to a closing period one day when the new month starts. What that allows you to do is create an authorization. So you can set authorization for certain people that can post into a closing period. This is useful, again, at the beginning of a new month. Uh, you don't want any of your sales documents or invoices posting into the prior month, but you may have accounts payable invoices or certain journal entries that need to be done by the accounting department that need to post into the prior month. So you can set it this way. The final one is locked. Once a period is locked, nobody can post to it. Now, these periods could be changed. So in essence, if you lock a period and you want to go back, you can always go back and you can always unlock the period. You'll see here a series of dates. You have the posting date, and this is controlled by the number of periods. In this case, this is December of 2013. So you can see you have a posting date from the beginning of the month to the last day of the month. You also have the due dates of from and to, and the document dates from and to. You have the start of the fiscal period and the actual fiscal period itself. So let's create one. So here we're going to go to new period. And we're going to come here and we're going to create 2014. We're going to call this 2014. We're going to select our sub-periods. And here we're going to do months you're going to see that it's going to come in as unlocked and it's going to create by default the periods here. Now, one of the issues that happens, if you notice when I'm creating these by default, the, the document dates are going to the end of the current year. This creates issues in SAP. For example, if you have business partners or customers that have term of, say, net 45 days or net 60 days, what's going to happen in November when you try to add a document with a due date into January or into the next year, you're going to get a message in SAP saying that the due date is outside the permissible range, which is in here. So what I do to make it easy, I just change this, and I'm going to make this, I'm just going to go a year out. So I'm going to go 12, 31, 15, and I'm going to do the same here. Okay? You don't have to go an entire year. You can just go a couple months, but you know, you get the idea. So if you have terms that are maybe net 60, net 90, you want to be able to go out so you don't have issues in um, the last couple months of the year. And we're going to go ahead and click Add. Okay, so now we come down here and we can see that we've created these new periods. So if we let's go into the December of 2014, you can see the dates. Now, if you, do, if, you do not, if you do not do that that way, you can always come in here and do the dates. Uh, again, you may have an issue with somebody, uh, let's say in the month of November, they're entering an invoice with net 45 days, and they're getting the uh, date, the error that they're outside the permissible range. You can come into the posting period, 
this case select November, and you can manually change these dates if you want. So that concludes the defining posting periods in SAP.